In this tutorial, you will learn how to create a zoetrope inside Blender. But what is a zoetrope? To easily explain it, I want to show you a flipbook. If you look at this flipbook, you can see that every next image the animation continues. There are more kinds of zoetropes, but the first one was a cylindrical shape where a drawn animation was put on the inside. When the cylinder gets rotated, you can see that the animation starts moving. The animation seems very blurry and this is why there are slits in the cylinder. If you look through the slits you can see that the animation gets smoother. A 3D zoetrope is made out of 3D models and there are no slits anywhere to make the animation smooth. They actually use a strobe light to break up the blurry animation in separate frames. I already created some simple models with materials. You are free to download them from the resource pack um, but it's not necessary. We will start all the way over. I see you guys inside Blender. So here we are inside Blender and I want um, to show you like the whole process. If you want to use some of the models that I have already created, you can of course just import them, okay? So um, yeah, we want to create a coin. It's gonna be a cylinder and I'm just gonna scale it down around the z-axis, okay? So scale down until it's kind of a coin-like shape. Now go to the front view, which is gonna be if you click on one. Rotate this around the x-axis for 90 degrees and make sure you apply all transformations, which is Ctrl A, by the way. Now we can use this cube here as a coin slot, okay? So you want to scale the cube a little bit down around the y-axis, scale y, and then go into wireframe mode because um, it has to be a little bit bigger than the coin itself, right? The coin has to shoot out of there. So this is going to be the coin slot, bam, and then we of course have the coin. These two we want to move around the y axis, and why do we move them around the y axis like this? That is because we want to make sure we have a duplicate of, of the coin slot, and we want to make sure the duplicate goes into a circle. The problem is, if we just use a array modifier, um, it does not go in a circular pattern, right? The way that I like to do this is, instead of the relative object, I like to rotate it around the object offset. But for that to work, we need to select an object. So click on Shift C, and this makes sure that your 3D cursor uh, jumps to the middle. Now we're gonna add an empty, and I'm just gonna do the plane axis. So this is our empty. Select your coin slot, and then you can do the object offset. That's gonna be our empty. So you can see that something weird happens. This is not really what I wanted to do, and that is because we need to apply the transformations of the coin slot. So Ctrl A, all transformations, or all transforms. And now if you rotate this empty, you can see that our duplicate, which is the count two, is moving with it. So we want a count of 30, right? And if you rotate this, you can see that it kind of works, but it's hard to line them up in a good way. So how do we essentially do this? Well, we get our Reken machine, or also called calculator in English, <laughs> and we do 360, because a circle is 360 degrees. We're gonna divide it by the amount of frames that we want. So that's gonna be 30. So. 12 degrees. If we rotate this empty, rotate Z, 12, you can see that we have a nice um, yeah, distribution. If you want your cube and your coin a little bit further, you can just select them both, move it a little bit outwards, and you can see that the, yeah, the coin slots are kind of acting weird right now, it's not really a circle anymore. That is because, because we moved it out and this moves the origin. So the only thing you have to do is just select the coin slot, Ctrl A and do all transformations, okay? So now everything is back at what it should be. Awesome, so very, very simple as you can see. And now we need to create a base, okay? So I'm gonna create a base, which is just gonna be a cylinder. Skill, Shift, Set, and then uh, we need to make sure that the coins fit in here, so I am going to select this bottom face, move the bit down, and um, on the top I actually want the coin slots to be uh, a little bit above it, 
And this is because I want to make sure I can cut this coin slot out of the base, which we're going to do with a Boolean modifier. So let's start with the modifiers of the base. So the cylinder we can rename to base and we're going to add a modifier. The first modifier is going to be a bevel modifier. And just from knowledge, I know that this bevel modifier isn't really working the way that it's supposed to be. So I'm going to click on Ctrl A and apply all the transformations. So you can see that it changed and this is, yeah, better than before, but it still wants to bevel every single edge. And we only want it to bevel the top and the bottom edge. So what do we do for this? We put the limit method at angle. Awesome. Now we can start to create some subdivisions to make this a bit more smooth. Um, it's just a bit too smooth and the corners are not really sharp anymore. So just go back to your bevel modifier and make sure you put the segments a little bit up. So two or three would work great. Now just apply the shade smooth with W and we can start thinking about our Boolean modifier. So the Boolean modifier just cuts out other objects out of this object. So you can just select the coin slots and if you hide the coin slots right now you can see that we have holes inside of our base if you want to get rid of these shading artifacts go here inside the object data and then click on normals and do auto smooth okay so this makes it nice and uh, yeah clean as we want it awesome so that is our base and yeah those are our coin slots so now we can start working on the animation of the coins what I like to do here is I go to collection, make a new collection. I'm just going to rename this to coins. This coin here, I want to animate. So I'm going to click on shift H and just focus on this coin right now. Our animation is going to take 30 frames. So I'm going to put the end at 30 and one like good way to do this kind of zoetrope is to actually make the first and the last frame the same and this makes yeah it makes the animation looping and you want a nice and looping animation because then it just keeps happening it keeps happening so let's start with the animation select your coin and the first frame is going to be uh yeah good where it is so click on e then lock rod scale same for the last frame e lock rod scale so now it just stays in this position but Let's say at half of these, so at frame 15, we want it to jump higher. So let's do around here, click on E, lock rod scale. So now if we play this, you can see that it jumps up and then jumps down to the same position as the first frame, right? So it is just, yeah, a looping animation as you can see. So if you look at a base, how does this look? Looks awesome, right? To create a little bit more, more variety in here, I wanted to also flip. If I start flipping here already, I can show you. Don't uh, copy this, but I will just show you why I won't do it like this. So e. If I already start flipping it in this frame, you will see that um, as we are flipping it, it here like goes through our geometry. We do not want that. So let me click on Ctrl Z a few times. So what I like to do is I want it to be straight before it actually exits our um, base. So if we find a frame where it is just like this or is just out of the base, I want to create a keyframe there. So I'm just going to do it like this. It's a little bit inside, but it's it's good enough. So E, lock rod scale. And we're going to do the same for the other part. E, lock rod scale, right? So at frame 9 and at frame 21 I have two more keyframes so now if I start to actually rotate this coin at frame 15 rotate 90 e lock rod scale you can see that because we put an extra keyframe at frame 9 it stays straight so it does not go through our geometry and now it starts to flip and here we have a nice flip the problem is that frame 21 doesn't take account the flip anymore right it just goes back so i want to rotate this so it makes like we have this 180 degrees uh, flip right you can see that it just wants to flip and then it goes back that this doesn't make sense so at frame 21 i'm gonna rotate around the x-axis for 180 degrees click on e and lock rod scale so now you can see that 
it flips and keeps flipping till it reaches the 180 degrees that we've just created. Now you can see that it wants to flip back again. So also for the frame 30, I'm gonna rotate it around the x-axis for 180 degrees and do lock rod scale. So now it just has a decent flip. I know that this last frame and the first frame are not necessarily the same. They do end up in the same spot, but the model you know, on one side might be a diff bit different than on the other side. Um, but in this case, I thought this looked cooler, so I, I, I just went with it. What we want to do now is a little bit more time tedious, I would say. We want to use the collection that we've just created, and I'm going to duplicate this coin. So the coin 001 is going to be in the collection. We can hide our other coin, and I keep it just because if something goes wrong, I always have that animation still ready. So for this coin here, I want to go to object, animation, and bake actions. Click on OK. And now you can see that every single frame is baked. So what do we do now? Well, we want every single frame that we have also a little step further. There is no like automatic way to do this. We can't really do this with an array modifier. So what I like to do now is I want to use this first coin as a kind of a duplication method. So I'm just going to duplicate it. Then I'm, I'm going to the next frame, delete all of these keyframes from the duplicate, and then move this around. I want to move it inside of the next slot. To do this in a simple way, we are just going to make sure our 3D cursor is in the middle. So you can just click on shift C if you want to make sure it's in the middle. Then go to the pivot point and make sure the pivot point is around the 3D cursor. So as before, you just have to rotate Z for 12 degrees. It is that simple. Now for the next one, I want to duplicate this first coin again. I'm going to frame 3 now. Delete all the keyframes, rotate Z 12 and another time. So this is going to be of all of these uh, 30 uh, coins. So duplicate it, go one frame further, X, delete keyframe, rotate Z, 12, 12, 12. So duplicating it and then rotating it around the Z axis for 12 degrees kind of gets tedious over time. So there is a very simple way to actually just duplicate your last uh, keystroke. What you want to do is duplicate it. Again, move one keyframe further. X, delete keyframes. Now, rotate Z, 12. And now what you want to do is you want to just click on Shift R. And that was, of course, the rotation around the Z axis. So it's quite simple, okay? So just duplicate this, yeah, bam. Rotate Z, 12. Shift R, Shift R, Shift R, Shift R. It makes it kind of quicker. So you need to do this for every single one of these coins. Okay, so here you have all our coins and this animation. So what you want to do is you want to select all the coins. Bam. Then select your base. And then click on Ctrl P and do set parent to object. So all of these coins are now parented to this object. So how are we going to animate this? Just select your base. And then we are going to here into the object. And we're going to rotate this, okay? So the first rotation around the z-axis is just going to be zero. Around frame 30, we wanted to rotate, let's do 360 degrees. Insert keyframe. So as you can see, it does rotate. The problem is it goes quite slow in the beginning, speeds up, and then like, goes slow again in the end. This has to do with the interpolation mode of your animation. So if we actually grab in here a new uh, editor type, which is going to be the graph editor, we can look at our Z axis here. Z axis. And you can select them both, top and the bottom. What you want to do here is you want to make sure the interpolation mode is not a Bezier, 
but a linear okay so now it's just straight and it will create a looping animation okay so I can kind of delete this again and here we can see our looping animation so it looks good I like it there's one thing that I want to change and that is um, our base does not really rotate with it or essentially the booleans not and that's because we did not apply all the modifiers so just go to your base and apply all of the modifiers that you just created and now you can see that it moves with it you can see that um, this these coin slots and the coins move uh, we want them to sh look like they stand still so what you want to do here is actually go into rotation and at frame 30 we should have not 360 degrees but we're going to do this min minus 12 348 degrees okay and now you can see that they just stand still and we have a nice animation so this is the way that you can create a zoetrope um i want to be totally honest if you would subs like to subscribe like or maybe even look at my website i have amazing courses there uh, i put a lot of time into them that will mean a lot to me um, and otherwise, I hope you guys learned something and um, yeah, see you guys in the next one.